Hi guys, um, we are looking at graphing two equations, f of x and g of x, and our goal is to find when the two intersect and solve it both graphically and algebraically. All right, let me show you how this looks on Desmos. Um, we have our first equation, which is 3f of x equals 3x plus 2. Here's our equation on Desmos, the red line. And then we have our second equation, which is the square root of x plus 4. And here we go. And we could clearly see that on Desmos, our intersection is definitely going to be at 0, 2. So this is definitely going to be our intersection. But I am going to graph it on paper so you guys could see it. And I'm, I'm also going to show you algebraically how that solution works. All right, so here we go. So we have our first equation here, f of x is equal to 3x plus 2. Here is my graph. We know that the vertical line is our y-axis. The horizontal line is our x-axis. Right, to graph, so we should recognize when we look at f of x, this is a linear equation. Okay, at this point, we should be able to recognize that is a linear equation. Linear equations means you have y is equal to mx plus b. This is one of um, where our m in this particular case is 3, and we're going to put that over 1 because our slope is rise over run. Our b, which is our y-axis, is 2. So we know that point is at 0, 2, and we always start with the y-intercept. So we're going to go to our y-intercept, put a dot on 0, 2 here. We're going to use our slope, which is rise 3, run 1. So we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1 up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Now we know that starting from the y-intercept is the same thing as um, having a slope of negative 3 over negative 1 is the same thing as saying 3 over 1. So we could go down 3. So 1, 2, 3, left 1. 1, 2, 3, left 1. Now we clearly have enough points to make our straight line for our linear equation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge over here, and line it up, make a straight line, and this is our f of x. Now we're ready to graph our g of x. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and use red for our g of x, so we're right here graphing this equation. D looking at this equation, we have a square root of x plus 4. So the name of this equation, this is called a radical equation. It's a radical function, a radical function. So our previous one was linear. Second one is a radical function. So um, we can do this using an x and y chart and have our starting point. Remember, we have a starting point where we take the opposite of what's inside that radical. So that's going to be negative 4, 0, because there is no number on the outside. So that's a 0. So at negative 4, 0, we are at negative 4, so we're at 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 0, we're right here. To get the next point, remember, because it's a radical, you want to make sure that you pick numbers that give you a perfect square. So you could take the square root of perfect square number, so that way it looks really nice when you graph it. Um, so um, let's go ahead and do negative 3 here. So when we plug in negative 3, we get 1, and we know that the square root of 1 is still 1. So we're at negative 3, 1, so here's another point. Um, our next number at this point, we could definitely pick 0, because we know that 0 plus 4 is 4, and 4 is a perfect square, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we're up here at 0, 2, and we should notice something here. We're right on top of the... Um, our y-intercept for our previous problem. And um, let's pick one more point just so that way we could see how far this goes out. So let's go with 5, because 5 plus 4 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to go 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 3, 1, 2, 3, here we go. Let's make this graph. There we go, this is our g of x, nicely graphed for us. We see the intersection, here's my intersection here. So 
graphically, these two equations meet at 0, comma 2. So in this particular example, there's only one, in, one intersection, and that one intersection is 0, comma 2. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and solve our equation. We're going to solve our problem algebraically. So we did it graphically. So let's do it algebraically. Algebraically, what does that mean? That means to set your two equations equal to each other. So that means f of x is equal to g of x. Okay. Um, well, what is f of x? Well, f of x is 3x plus 2 is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Our goal is to solve for x. Well, in order for us to solve for x, we need to um, square both sides in order to cancel out the square root. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to square 3x plus 2. Then we're going to square the radical. And when we square the radical, what happens? The radical in the square cancels out. Now, don't forget, this is a binomial squared on this other side. So that means this is going to give you 9x squared plus the middle term, which is 2 times 3x, that gives us 6x, times 2, which is 12x, plus 2 squared, which is 4, is equal to, and uh, remember when we squared it, we canceled out the radical, so now we just get x plus 4 comes out, out of the radical. We notice that we have an x squared, so we have 9x squared here, so we're probably going to end up with factoring. So let's move. So we're going to subtract x. We want to move everything to the left side. All right, so we're going to subtract it from 12x. Um, and then we're also going to subtract the 4 from 4 over here. Don't forget when you're subtracting an x, that's the same thing as subtracting 1x. So you bring down your 9x squared plus 11x is equal to 0, because 4 minus 4 is 0, and then all of this subtracted each other is also 0. All right, so we have 9x squared plus 11x is equal to 0. Clearly, at this point, we need to factor. So we need to go through what we've learned about factoring. We don't have three terms. We only have two terms in this case. So let's see if we can find a GCF. Is there a GCF in this particular case? Well, there is. There is a greatest common factor. We can take out a x. And then we end up with 9x plus 11, close parentheses, is equal to 0. Okay, now we have two things that we're going to set equal to 0. So we're going to have x is equal to 0. And then we're going to also have 9x plus 11 is equal to 0. x is equal to 0 is already solved for us. So we have this equation that we need to solve. So we're going to go subtract 11 from both sides. We're going to end up with 9x is equal to negative 11. Then we need to divide by 9, and we're going to get x is equal to negative 11 over 9. All right, so we have these two solutions. This indicates that it intersects at two different points. But clearly from our previous example, we only have one intersection, which means that one of these answers is an extraneous answer. And we also could check that by plugging, in, plugging both of them in and seeing if it holds. So remember, your equation is 3x plus 2 is equal to the square root of x plus 4. If you plug in 0, that gives us 2 is equal to the square root of 4, well, 2 is equal to 2. So we know that this is a solution. If we plug in negative 11 over 9, it's not going to work. So this is, what is our special name for something that does not work? You guessed it. That is our extraneous solution. So remember, that is our solution um, that does not make sense. So it's our fake answer. So that's our extraneous solution. All right, so in this particular case, once you've solved this to find the solution, then you would actually would have to write down that the two intersect, they intersect at 0, that's our x, and our y is 2. And it, and it makes sense with our graph as well. 
And there you have it. The problem is solved. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Have a good day. Bye-bye.